Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and in this little video, I want to tell you about which interesting things would emerge if you were to ask questions like, what is the negative first odd number? Which is something that I pondered the other day when I was wondering about the index numbers of certain terms in sequences. When you ask, what is the so-and-so with of certain types of numbers, the answer is quite obvious, not in terms of what it must be, because these are all human-made definitions that we could define however we wanted, but in terms of what works most conveniently and smoothly within a system. For example, if we were to ask about the prime numbers, ignore all the stuff at the bottom there, that's left over from the last main episode I put on my other Combo Class channel, which you should make sure to check out at some point. But the prime numbers here, two, three, five, seven, and so on, if we were to index those, we could say that P1, meaning the first prime, is two, and then P2 is three. That's how we would typically index it. And there's not really, in most cases, a reason to do anything different, but if it did help a certain context, you could, within some mathematical paper, note that, no, we're actually calling that P0 and that P1 and that P2. Or we could start from some other point and ascend from there. We could theoretically call this the negative first prime, then zeroth, then first, then so on, although that might rarely be useful. But with some other sequences, it is more useful. Like if I were to look at, say, the powers of two, the powers of two often could be said to start with two and then we double it and double it and so on. But often we want to include the zeroth power of two. And since the powers of two are a straight up formula, they are two to the power of some n, it makes a lot of sense to say that this is the zeroth term, which sometimes is ignored from lists of the powers of two, and other times it's noted that the sequence is starting from that earlier point to include the one. And then we have the first term, given that that is two to the first power. Second term, because it's two to the second power. But what about negative indices? Well, we could have a negative indexed one here. I could have one half is two to the negative first power. And while that wouldn't usually be included in a list of the powers of two without any other specifications, there are times you may want to make those other specifications and say, well, we're actually going to do something with all of the powers of two from, let's say, the negative second power, which would be one fourth, one half, and then some of the more expected cases. So this does have sensible terms to line up with the negative indices, even if they aren't always included in a list of the powers of two. And somewhat similarly, if you look at the even numbers, ignore that, similar as before, even numbers, kind of like the powers of two, where two to the power of n are two times n for some n. So normally you look at a number line and you say, okay, well, I have two. That makes sense to call the first even number. And it's true that it's two times one. And so it's the first case of that or what we get when we plug one into there. Similarly, three isn't one, but four right there is the second and is two times two. And we could say that zero is the zeroth even number. Unlike the prime numbers where it's a bit more subjective and more likely that other labelings would have uses, here it's pretty much always gonna be what we get when we plug into that formula. So if I wanted to say something like, 
What is the one and a half the even number? Even though typically that would not be considered an even number, if we came across that and had to figure out what someone meant by the one and a half the even number, we would assume they meant what you get when you take 2n where n is one and a half. Meaning three could be seen as the one and a half the even number. Now the one and a half the even number is not going to be a commonly encountered concept, but I can more likely imagine coming across something like the negative first or negative second even number, and that completely would make sense. By all sensible ways of defining this, the negative first even number should be negative two, and the negative second should be negative four, and so on. But what about the odd numbers? So now let's get to this original whiteboard. Now with odd numbers, things get kind of weird. Because with odd numbers, if you were to ask somebody who doesn't study much math, what is the first odd number? They would probably say that the first odd number was one and that the second odd number was three and so on. But if you were to ask a mathematician this, it would depend on the context and they would probably tell you either, actually, that's the zero with, or would tell you that it depends on the circumstance which of these two ways you're going to follow. Now, these follow different equations. We can define the odd numbers as either 2n plus 1 for some n, or as 2n minus 1 for some n. And it's similar to how you could either casually describe them as the numbers that are one more than an even number or the numbers that are one less than an even number. Also, in mathematical senses, if you've seen my videos about modular arithmetic, it relates to how one and negative one are congruent to each other in mod two. So here, if we follow this definition, we get one being the first odd number, three being second, but then let's backtrack. We don't go right to the question I had here, which is the negative first one. First, we're gonna want a zero with odd number. If we backtrack, we're gonna want that to either be going back an odd number, or we're gonna see that that will also line up with the formula in either case. And we're going to want it to be what happens when we plug in zero or negative one or something into one of these. And in this circumstance, what we get is that the zeroth odd number is negative one. And then we would get that the negative first odd number is negative three. Whereas in this circumstance, we get that the zeroth odd number was one, the negative first one is negative one, and then, or I guess the arrow should go here, we have the negative second odd number in that case. But here is the issue, is that you'd like them to be balanced like the even numbers were, where with the even numbers, the negative nth even number is the negative version of the nth even number. Basically, if we draw a number line and we're looking at the numbers that are odd and trying to label which number they are of odd number, we either can call this the first but then this one's the zero with, and then it's asymmetrical, the second, but the negative first. Or our other way of labeling them was to call that the zero with, in which case that's the first, that's the negative first, and it's still uneven. So in either case, we can't make the odd numbers symmetrical. They get two definitions, but neither of the definitions worked cleanly in the way that the even numbers do. And so with the odd numbers, unfortunately, the way that they are symmetrical around what we could consider the center of the real number line, the number zero, is symmetrical itself, 
but can't be labeled in a symmetrical feeling way. Now, if you need to pick one of the two definitions for odd numbers to get like one singular answer to the question, then I would say usually mathematicians default to the 2n plus 1 definition. And so I would say I would probably default to saying that the zeroth odd number is 1, meaning the negative first odd number is negative 1, kind of like many people would guess, but that the first odd number is 3, which, oh, whoa, some people might not guess. And then there are some sequences that have even crazier extensions if you want to try to get to the negative second term or something like that, such as the factorials and what's called the gamma function. But that's a story for another day. Anyway, that's all for this little video. Make sure you've all checked out my latest episode on my main combo class channel, which is one of the best videos I have made yet. And special thanks to the people who make these videos possible. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you again soon.